time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and today I'm gonna to show you how to 3D print this little guy right here. This is a 50 caliber rifle cartridge that's been scaled up by 350% because I wanted to test printing something really tall on my newest 3D printer. It's a CME CNC Rostock Max V2 Custom that it was customized for me to print up to 30 inches tall. So this is just our first test. We can go a lot taller than this. Also as a special treat, my good friend Rob, otherwise known as Darth Tigger 501 over on Twitter offered to take this big blue plastic bullet and finish it and make it look like a real one. Also, today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're unfamiliar with Squarespace, they're a service that gets you up and running quickly with your own web page, blog, or e commerce site. You start by selecting one of their many templates and then modifying it to your heart's content to get exactly what you want. Now, you don't need any prior software development or web development experience to use them. They are very user friendly. I've been using them for two years now to run my shop shop.barnerd.com site and they give me my monthly statistics analytic data and they show me my inventory and help me get data for my taxes at the end of the year if you guys would like to try out squarespace head over to squarespace.com forward slash barnacles and make sure you use code barnacles at checkout to get 10 percent off your first purchase all right so the first thing you're going to want to do is head on over to thingiverse so we can pick up the 3d model and right now i'm using a web browser called vivaldi if you guys don't recognize it it's an open source web browser that uh, i don't really have any feelings about just yet but i'll get back to you on that you're going to want to navigate over to the soviet 50 cal 12.7 by 108 millimeter 3D model created by 3D printer net.co.nz. Yes, they managed to get their entire URL into their name on Thingiverse. That's actually pretty clever. Now, if we scroll down, we can see there's pictures for a couple of different models. There's one that doesn't have markings on it. This is going to be the one we're 3D printing. And you can see it was actually modeled from the dimensions of an actual round. Now, if you scroll down, you can see I already created this. Obviously, I'm making the video on it right now. And I went to Thingiverse and actually registered that I made it to the original person that created this because I thought they might want to see what it looks like, you know, scaled up 350%. If you guys 3D print one, please register the make so I can see what you guys came up with. All right, let's go ahead and download this thing. Okay, so now we're going to open up the slicer. This is the Cura software that I have right here, and I had to manually go in and configure it for the Rostock Max V2 printer because it's not one of the default printers in this software. All right, so let's go ahead and drag in the file here. We got the Soviet shell with no logo on it. Now you can clearly see that the shell is upside down which we don't want to print in that orientation and it's really small it's the size of a real 50 caliber shell so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and rotate the model we'll go ahead and rotate it 180 degrees so now it's upright and then what we're gonna do is scale it up by 3.5 times roughly 350 percent actually precisely 350%. Now you can see at this size, we could still print the shell much larger because the build volume on this row stock is absolutely phenomenal. But we're gonna start out with something that's about half the build height so we don't burn a ton of filament trying to print something that literally takes days to finish. Okay, so for our settings, first we wanna print this in a 0.2 millimeter layer height because doing it at 0.1 is going to take forever. We're gonna go ahead and do a shell thickness of two because we wanna have a pretty thick wall on this. We're gonna do an infill of 20%. Now, honestly, you don't need any infill on this, and I found that out after the thought, but you know, I just wanna go ahead and show you guys what settings I use to print this. We're gonna go ahead and do it at a 70 millimeter a second print speed, and we're gonna use a temperature of 200 C on the hot end. Another thing that you need to be sure of is that your filament diameter is set to 1.75. This is the first printer I have that doesn't use 2.85 millimeter filament. Now, unfortunately, a mistake that I made on this print was I had the nozzle size set to 0.4 millimeters. On the row stock, by default, it's a 0.5 millimeter nozzle. Now, unfortunately, because I left it at four for this particular print, there was some under extrusion, which I'll show you during the printing process. Looks like our estimated print time is 25 hours for this one piece.
All right, now we're gonna print the bullet using a different 3D software. For this, we're gonna use Simplify 3D instead of Current. Now, this software is pretty amazing and I'm still exploring its capabilities, but you can already see it has the row stock printer profile built in and the build platform is round like it should be. Let's go ahead and drag in the bullet. Now we can immediately see that the bullet is in the wrong orientation. So we're gonna double click on it and we're gonna go ahead and rotate it uh, on the X axis, 180 degrees. And now you can see it's underneath the build platform. So we're gonna come over here and click the center and arrange button. That'll put it back up where it's supposed to be. We're gonna double click it again and now we need to scale it up to 350% so it fits our larger uh, shell that we just 3D printed. Now over here on the left, we have a panel that lists the processes. So I'm gonna double click the process and you can see under here, it has my printer profile selected. We wanna go ahead and print this in a fast configuration for print quality. We're gonna tell it we wanna use PLA. We're gonna actually use an infill percentage of zero because we want this one to actually be hollow. I also wanna check the box that says generate support because we're gonna need support material around the inside edge of this thing. Now, the one of the things I really like about Simplify 3D is not only does it have cleaner tool paths than Cura to generate a more uniform print, but the way that it does support material makes it very, very easy to remove from the model. So now I'm gonna go over and click Prepare to Print, and you're gonna see a new UI open up, and it's gonna show you right here, you can see there's a little uh, chart up here saying what the speed will be for each layer. You can see the support material down below is this nice zigzag pattern that tears away very, very easy. I actually, I, I really love how this thing does support material. If you're printing really complex objects, Simplify 3D just does an amazing job of it. You can also come down and push the play button down here and it actually shows you in real time how the printer is gonna do, how the printer is gonna print your object. You can even speed it up. Um, but you can see obviously that's gonna take forever. So we can click by layer and you can see how it's gonna build up the layers. It's gonna be a hollow object and you can see exactly how everything is done. You can even like change different layers, different areas. This thing's really, really cool. You can even slow it down so you can watch it again layer by layer. And you can see how that support material is just one giant zigzag that cleanly tears away. It's, it's absolutely awesome, guys. So now all we do is get this over to the 3D printer. All right, guys, well, we finished printing the two pieces to this 50 caliber giant looking now howitzer size shell, and I brought it over to Darth Tigger's house, which I'm actually jealous of his garage. His garage is absolutely beautiful. He has like, you could set up an indoor track in here, but uh, he's gonna help me take this and sand it down and we're gonna paint it. We're gonna make this part silver, right? The projectile. Yep. And then the casing, what color are we doing this guy? Sort of like a gold brass. So like a gold, we're gonna try to make it look like a little, a little bit, a little bit brassy. And uh, when we're done, this hopefully will look a lot more like a bullet and less like a dummy test round for a tank. Or a dildo. Or a dildo. Let's get started. We're gonna start with 150 grit just to see how it does. This ball is too much. Paint me like one of your French girls. Yeah. You're a liability, Jerry. I'm a liability, apparently. Normally I do this, you know, a lot more safely. <laughs> a lot more safely? No, you wouldn't. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Professional, I ain't. So we just sanded this piece. 
Now we're gonna apply a little primer on there. Yeah, this is actually primer that I'm planning to sand back off. I'm, uh, I'm only doing this so that I can see uh, how well we've sanded and where the rough spots are. I know what I'm doing. Man, what are your neighbors gonna think of you painting something silver in your backyard that looks like that? I'm starting a new business. <laughs> I'll see you! All right, so we went ahead and put some uh, primer on these two pieces. Now we're just sanding it off. Well, actually, Rob's doing all the work. I'm just kind of being lazy behind the camera like usual. Isn't that always the way? <laughs> hey, this is. I, I've talked to some other big YouTubers, and we all figured out that the way that you get rich on YouTube is by making other Canadian people do the work for you. <laughs> Gotta be Canadian. <laughs> Gotta be Canadian, dude. You just you look really good at that. You look you look like you you do well on the internet. I think I would. You would. So uh, we're not going to sand this um, completely round, right? No, no, because we, we decided that would be way too much work. No, you decided it would be way too much work. I mean, everybody out on the internet, they, they, they see what we're doing here. And if we make it perfect, then they might be scared about trying it themselves. So what we want to do is hork it. I saw that. We just want to hork it up just enough that they feel like they can do a better job. It doesn't matter how how good you make it, somebody out there is going to think they can do a better job. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> and you don't want to go super, super crazy with the primer here on each coat. No, light coats are always better. Yep. I learned the hard way, especially with the Stormtrooper suit, that you don't want to go heavy on the coats. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because when you get a drippy line, those are not easy to fix. They're really not. Yeah, Rob, why don't you check the finish on that? Is that dry? What do you think? Yeah, you know, it's, 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 it's almost dry. Is it almost dry? Yeah, keep doing that. Yeah. Yeah, that's like probably getting me more views right now. <laughs> Ooh, hashtag dirty dark tiger. Cheapest shit that you can find, <laughs> but it probably works the best out of any of the metallic paints that I found. Look at that Rustoleum Branco metallic finish. Yeah. Oh yeah. Look at that. So we're gonna have the bullet there and we got the shell casing there. It's gonna be shiny. Alright, time to make this bullet silver. Let's do it. Wow. Kind of amazing, eh? That's actually a lot better than I was expecting. Damn, that looks really good. Ooh, shiny bullet. That's way better than the blue. All right, brought it in and set it next to the lightsaber to dry. Now we're gonna go paint the shell casing. Time to make this uh, gray casing here. Right now this looks like a, che a cheap casing. Now we're gonna make it look like an expensive casing. Ooh, pretty. God, that paint looks so cool. Dude, looking through the viewfinder here, this looks like legitimately like a bullet casing. Dude, I was not expecting that to look that good. The sheen coming off that thing? Yeah. That's good paint. Oh, that turned out great. Yeah, I like and that was just going around basically doing like one coat. You guys can see just a little bit of like the polygon, you know, on this, but gosh, that shine. You get that out in like some real sunlight, that's gonna look crazy good. All right, so now we're gluing the projectile and using a two-part epoxy here and a popsicle stick. And my hand is wrapped in a towel because it's not quite as dry as I want it to be yet, yep. but I'm impatient as hell. Yeah, we're, 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 we're trying to be, we're running out of light here, guys, so you know, gotta cut a couple corners. <laughs> like we don't ever cut corners. <laughs> we never cut corners. Never guys. cut a corner, ever. Never once. No, no, no. All right, there you go. There you go, get in there nice and easy. Easy, easy, gentle. Oh, you see that coming out? Oh, is it gooping out a little? Oh, it's gooping out a lot, actually. Ooh. Ooh. Uh-oh. We might need a little wipe job there. Just a little too much goop. I can fix this. If I had a dollar for every time I heard you say that. Prop makers never get it completely right the first time. A lot of prop making is an exercise in uh, fixing your mistakes so people can't see uh, the mistakes that you've made. Oh, I can tell you by all means if I did this it would be ten times worse So see so you, you actually with me You got a lot a lot of wiggle room here to just make every mistake in the book and still come out on top And then I'll, I'll also tell you that most prop makers are way better than I am at this. It's okay You know you fix it here. Look see watch this watch. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Look it's fixed dude. That looks so cool though It's amazing how much the paint changes it though like because when it was 3d printed all the same color You don't really see it now it's, you can't, you couldn't mistake that for anything other than a bullet right now. Like everybody was like, hey, you made a rocket. No, you can, that is not a rocket. You know what? That dude? is legit, dude. That looks good, man. Yeah, it does. We made a big bullet. That looks amazing. That looks pretty good. That looks absolutely amazing. All right, we can leave it like that. <laughs> All right, guys, well, there you have it, the final product. That was
would say that actually looks a lot more like a bullet. It does. Than it did when I brought it in here looking like a giant blue smurf. So, now I'm not gonna say we didn't make some mistakes. We were rushing things a little bit, you know? It's like, you know, it's just, it's just a YouTube video. It's not, it's not like this is going to the Smithsonian. It adds to the character. It does, it adds to the character. You know, there's a couple of fingerprints here and there and stuff, you know? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not pointing any fingers. But uh, we went ahead and epoxied the tip on here so it's all one complete piece. Now if I want, I can take it and put it on a stand or something like that. I think that'll be the next thing is I'll find some place to put it on display at my house because I think that's, that's awesome. Maybe I'll even just put it on my door just to detour solicitors. I think that might actually be the trick. So guys, if you have any questions about this project, leave them down in the comments. Also, come over and get a follow to me on Twitter. I'm at Barnacles, and this Yahoo over here is at DarkTigger501. And he's helped me on quite a few videos. He helped on the Stormtrooper project. Uh, what's some of the other stuff that we've done? Do you remember? We did this, no. we did a lot of little, oh, the, the Master Chief helmet. Yep. We did that, and the Master Chief blaster, the, the Magnum. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, done, he's done a couple things. I'll try to link some of those down in the video description. This was fun. This is actually a really quick project. The print turned out awesome. It did, yeah. And, uh, awesome. and, and the paint, you know, honestly is pretty shiny. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this a success. Yeah. I think so. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time. <laughs> Ooh, and I can polish your tip, too. I know, right? <laughs> Oh, actually, that looks a little tall for you. Here, let me pull that down off the table there just so you can get a better reach on it. Okay. So it's like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not sure that my wife would like um, this kind of money coming in, though. No. What about that kind of money? Well, yeah. We could. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself.